Are you ready? I'm ready. I don't to scroll. For my debut. You take these off. It's too big. Yeah. That, that makes it so much noise over here. Too much mirrors. I think this little coffee stuff is making me hyper. Because mm -hmm. you need to have some. some, some yeah, because earlier ass. I was a little bit. Some angry. Some spazazz. Some spazazz. Say it again. Spazazz. You need to have some spazazz. When spazazz. You're doing this. Can you spell it? Uh, don't really know if that's a real word. Bajazzle. But... Oh, like bajazzle, remember? I'm oh, bajazzle yeah, my bajazzle. vagina. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Yeah. Nah. Okay. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about uh, the Beyonce and Jay-Z ticket prices. Like, who, who are they trying to sell these to? And on top of that, you know, somebody was in the news about cultural appropriation. Uh, somebody who we, I don't know. I'm a big fan of Me his too. Music. I'm a big fan I of I love also. it. So I have, a, I have an opinion about this. Yeah. Somebody who started yeah. off also like us uh, got into an argument with one of the most highly publicized DJs, DJs. in Houston or in the, in, in not Houston. In New York. New York. <laughs> New York City. But they're uh, nationally syndicated. There you go. There cool. you go. And also, we're talking about some Travis Scott beef after his newborn baby. No. It had nothing to do with that? No. It's Tory Lanez who created the beef. Uh, mm. But he just had a baby, so why is he beefing? Right. You know? You should be at home with your baby. Hello? Okay. And some other sex topics, like there's now a BJ robot that's going on around. Um, interesting. Uh, interesting. And also in the news, you know, domestic violence is, uh, again, in the news in sports, dealing with males. So we're going to talk about all these topics today, but you are now listening to the Mixed in Mexican podcast, Conversations with Kay. And Keeks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for listening. If you're listening to us on SoundCloud or iTunes, or if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you. We love you. We love you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get a sip because I'm thirsty. We're, <laughs> we're all amped up on this Starbucks that we got going on here. Oh, by the way, we're not sponsored, so we paid for it. <laughs> we did. Yeah. $7.95. Twelve. Mine. Yeah, hers is expensive. <laughs> Mine's something for. Posta todo, But wait, let's start this out. So thank you everybody who's been supporting us and giving us really good feedback. I just want to address one thing though. Okay. Go ahead. We had a, our first hater. That's actually an accomplishment <laughs> in itself because you know when you pop in, you got haters, oh, right? Oh jeez, So let's clear this up real quick because one day we're gonna get more popular I'm and just I'm, fixing my hair while you talk about this right guy is annoying. so we're not gonna like put attention and give his name out or, any, or anything but we just want to clear up something we clear are, it up girl we are uh, i'm mexican and i'm black and mexican okay primarily. so basically that's what makes it mexican means okay yeah and we both have black men as partners in life hey daddy so, um, we're not racist. And if y'all know us, y'all know that we are very urban in the way that we move and a lot of things. And the things that we address and we always try to, like, push on people, not even push on people, but just kind of get people aware of are a lot of things that have to do with minorities. Right. Because we are now a majority. So, we just wanted to clear that up because people are always, like, this guy just made it seem like one thing that we said literally out of context because he was watching just one clip that we posted <clears throat> on our instagram right and he just made it seem like we were just talking bad about black people and that's not what we do and if you would have watched <sighs> the whole hour episode and watched that actually full conversation flow through it wouldn't have ever sounded the way that he did because i have a lot of friends who actually hit me up and were like hey Y'all's episode was dope. Like, blah, blah, blah. Right. mind you, these were all black men who sent me stuff, people exactly. that I've known, and kind of are surprised that we actually have substance in our in our podcast. I mean, we're so. both we're both like college educated individuals. We went to college. Me, I'm a sociology major. So, like, you telling me that I don't understand 
you know, the sociological, you know, status of our nature that we're in right now, of the livelihood that we have to right. live as minorities or black individuals, it's just, it's absurd. I mean, because quite frankly, you know, my dad is African American, my dad's black, okay? And my dad has had to deal with racism at work. My dad has had to deal with all these things that actually lead, led to lawsuits against the companies that he's actually worked for because yeah. of discrimination. Yeah. And also my uncles had to deal with some life incident where, you know, something bad happened to him at the hands of white men. So you telling me that I don't know about black men and you utilizing the fact that you have a Latina wife or whatever fiance, yeah. I don't care about that. No. What you're saying is 100% invalid. Like, yeah. we are talking about a culture that was within this type of entertainment industry and in that type of entertainment industry yeah there is numerous numerous images of black males with stacks of money <laughs> it's just it is what it is it you is you can't deny that. that and i was like am i not right because i'm i'm just, i'm sorry but i've seen it so many times and there right. are other rappers that are not black okay i know that duh you know like the little pump the six nine or Tikashi, but not just six, nine, that. whatever Go but, ahead. but it's seen in the culture. It's just a hip hop culture. I wasn't talking about black people in general, and I wasn't generalizing a stereotype either. I was just saying, is this not true? But I'm just gonna call recollection because the individual used Jay Z as one of his examples. Right. So if you are going to use Jay Z as one of your examples, make sure that that rapper alone didn't utilize the fact that we don't carry stacks of money around to showcase our wealth either. Because he said that in his album, 444. Yeah. We're done. Right? Yeah. Are you done? Oh, Are yeah. You done? I, just, <laughs> you know, I was just trying to, uh, you know, just address it. But it is what it is. But we it's, thank you, though. Yeah, because it was entertaining. It was fun to just keep going back and forth. <laughs> because that's what we want to do. We want you to, to engage with us. If and you feel like we're saying something wrong or... But the thing is, like now it's people are being so sensitive right. about anything. And so if they even hear remotely hear us say something about black people and we don't look black or Mexican or, or whatever, don't get it twisted. Like this is not we're not going to be like we're cookie cutter either. But, I mean, I'm just saying like, you know, I get kind of like it from both sides being a mixed race individual. Like yes. a lot of people look at me and think that I'm Puerto Rican. So like a lot of Mexicans think that I'm. Puerto Rican, so they all have that against me because certain Latino groups don't necessarily get along right. with one another. So it's like you can't call somebody a racist when you don't know anything about their past. Exactly. I mean, if they're bold and blatant, like saying right the N word, or using like you should be derogatory, sub, you know, subordinate or things like that. Like, that's bold face. Like, yeah. Racism. And that's, that's if we're sitting here bashing things. We were talking about the Oscars and how it was so uplifting and to see, you know, other things. So it's anyways, it's Oxymoron. just, it was definitely blown out of proportion within my Instagram. But right. I was like, okay, we over it. I'm done. I said my piece. I don't have to sit here and prove myself to anybody. This right. is my choice to have a podcast. It was our choice to do this. We are putting ourselves and our opinions and our experiences out there for the world to see. Exactly. We don't, we're trying to be an open book to people. Be transparent. So, exactly. So we just want you guys to be able to engage with us and actually feel something real. Because sometimes when you see, you're like, okay, it's media. You know, people fake it to make it. And we put up a facade. Well, there's no facade here. This is just... This Kay and real. I, you know, this we're best friends for the longest time. This is how we talk. This is how we move. And this is who we are. So if for some reason you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it. And you don't have to follow me. Like, I don't care. Right. I'm scratching my eye. My contact's fucked up. Oh. Right now. But let's move on. Let's talk about some pop culture. Ew. Ew. I shouldn't be beep, beep, my beep. Beep. Like this, But I am. Okay, so, you know, oh, geez, it's tax season time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody got their tax returns. But and the priorities are not there. Hello, like, Beyonce, girl. Jeez. See, they She's announced. Super talented. No. Okay, the On the Run 2 tour. I was like, okay, that's cute. I am never one of those people who's like, I'm about to go spend my savings on a concert. 
because neither I'm going, I'm not going to eat with you. I'm not going to sit there and talk to you and have a conversation. I'm not paying more than a hundred bucks. That's it. Right. Uh, because I went to Kanye and then you gave me tickets to go see Drake, which was free. Woo woo. Oh yeah, I did. Because <laughs> you couldn't go. But I am not like my Kanye tickets were like one something. Right. But we were close. Cool. And Kanye's was like, he had the floating stage. But anyway, like these people, people are going broke. How you gonna buy Beyonce tickets and not pay your rent? I mean, okay, so the Houston show is September 15th. Mm -hmm. It starts at 7.30. And I was like, hmm, let me go mosey on the website, Ticketmaster.com. That's cool. where you can get all your tickets from. They're not sponsored, but I'm gonna just say that. Boom. And the cheapest ticket is $100. Pero plus tax. Well, okay. parking. <laughs> okay. And my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> what else? I want a whole bunch of shit. If I'm gonna go, wash so your towel, my your sunglasses. Ooh. Okay, all this stuff. Your so, outfit, your nails, your hair. Basically, <laughs> the the base ticket is like a hundred dollars. Bitch, you gonna be all up in the fucking you are. It's section. like at the NRG Arena in Houston, oh, yeah. where the Texans, mm -mm. the Houston Texans play, and you're yeah. at the nosebleeds, top of the top of the top of the like top, like the three hundreds, three hundred. Yeah, and it's no, they're higher out. than that. Oh, it's those ones that are it's very like steep. Five, it's like 700 <laughs> no. something section. <gasps> no. All right. So no. anyways, so that's the cheapest one. The most expensive one like is cheap. on the floor. $3,536. And that's not even VIP? One ticket, not VIP. Hello? <laughs> I had to right? have a moment of silence <laughs> for, my, me? for my feelings. <laughs> For my feelings, I had to have a moment of silence. I got goosebumps feelings. when I said that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, 3500 No, but see, look. the thing is, look, mm -mm. Beyonce, you're Beyonce. You can do whatever you want to do. I just hope that my goal is to be able to charge $3,536 and that's zero cents per person to come see me. Mind you, y'all want to see that's me? outrageous. Me. I mean, we just letting y'all watch us for free on YouTube. <laughs> You know, like it's three ninety nine, por favor, pay for us. So that's why you have to watch it. Jeez. <laughs> so I mean, it's just crazy. So like, but she is the epitome of what is a female oh, I, empowerment woman, right? An I entertainer. Mean, for, for I mean, years. No, no, I understand the value of Beyonce. Like, I love Beyonce. Yeah. Um, except I'm not, go I'm not going broke for Beyonce. Yeah, I because mean, you know me and her not like friends, friends. Like I will go broke for you because you're my friend, <laughs> friend. But me and Beyonce like this. You and I are like this. Yeah, you know what I mean. So unfortunately, I'm a pass. I'm a I'm a hope that she does an HBO special. Yeah, you're gonna, oh, I mean I'll buy her album all day, girl. Yeah. I got the twenty dollars. <laughs> like I'll pay for that shit Boop, on and iTunes. blast it all over the house. I do not pay for title though, which is where all her music is at. <gasps> So no. I don't pay for title. I just like Apple so. Music. I'm Apple Music person too. Yeah. I mean, whatever. But they have the right to do that. So it's like, you know, wherever you decide to put your music, whoever you decide to put your music to, whoever you, you like listens to your music, or whatever type of music that you want to play, should that be up to you? Yeah. I think so. Regardless of race? Yeah. Oh. Well... According to, <laughs> I was like, "Why not?" Why I mean, can't? I'm just saying because according to some lady named Serene Sensi, she's like bashing Bruno Mars now. I saw this video. She's saying that he's a he's cult culturally appropriating. <laughs> I can't even cultural talk. appropriation. Um, cultural appropriating. I cannot talk. It's okay. um. Because so you're wired up on that stuff. I know, girl. I'm like fucking crazy. I feel like I'm shaking. No, but honestly, like she's saying that he is acting black, um, that he's doing. But see, like Jeez. cultural appropriation is like me going out and putting uh, box braids in my hair. Is that not? Or can I do that because I'm a Latina? But see, the, I mean, it t technically see, it would be. Yes, because. See, but the thing is, that would be like everybody celebrating Cinco de Mayo. You're not Mexican. St. Patrick's Day was just yesterday. You're and everybody Irish. was out there drinking and acting crazy. So, I feel like this is like a term that we need to kind of let it die down. Because if there's not a cross in cultures, then there's things that won't happen. Like, there's always like Asian fusion or like... But why does, why does R&B and like 
funk funk and stuff like that yeah. have to be one race i understand but you know he uses references like he'll give credit where it's due like if right. he was inspired by a certain artist he gives a shout out he's like for those you know people that inspired me and he'll say their names or whatever mm -hmm. when he gives speeches so if you give credit where it's due is it really cultural appropriation why can't you just feel the funk? Like, you just love that type of music. Well, I think that this is something that, you know, really the girl should have d dug and done her history about. Because if we're talking about cultural appropriation, you know, he's Puerto Rican. Yeah. And if you know the origin of Puerto Rican, you know that there we need to start acknowledging the fact that like Dominicans and Puerto Ricans and Cubans also have some African, African American in them. So if, if you're saying he's culture appropriating the black heritage he's also black yeah like if you just because he's no, filipino and he's jewish and he's puerto rican that doesn't negate the fact that somewhere in his bloodline there is a black ancestor yeah right yeah it's i true. mean i, I don't even know even mexicans have black and they're um afro mexicanos so right. but they're it, it's in the mexican culture to not push the shine on them either right which is unfortunate but i found that out too but, but you're she's the one who actually i mean i knew about afro latina i'm like, the one who told you I, that, yeah. I knew that that was like something that existed but the thing is that nobody uses that term no amara la negra she's the first one that i've heard like that's being like super really vocal. i'm afro latina that's what i am and right i love it but i think she overdoes a little just a little bit. I mean, I think, I think that it it's, have, her, it's her. It's her ammo. Yeah, but I mean, it's, she's it's using cool. that for, yeah. for publicity. But I think that it's great that she's actually, you know, because you know who one of my favorite artists is who? Celia Cruz. Oh well, yeah, of I course. love Celia. Anyways, I can go. I can listen to Celia Cruz every day. But I mean, people like Stevie Wonder, who's one of our greats. Mm -hmm. People say that he can see. By the way, that he's not really blind. But anyways, sidebar, that's another conversation for another day. Right. He's I'm one of the greatest, ribbon in the sky, for our love, <laughs> you can <laughs> Are you done karaoke your yeah. life away? Actually, I've been wanting to go karaoke, so. Oh, that'd be dope. Okay. But like privately, because I don't want to be singing to nobody, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I couldn't do it at, at Prize Big. I'd be like, Ooh. <laughs> like what if you mess up, but. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. Everybody no. Because mm -mm. you know that girl, Keisha Not Cole. Stop. Okay. So, but you know, <laughs> people like Stevie Wonder and a lot of other greats have actually backed Bruno Mars for his his That's albums and his talent. I think you're doing a great job, Bruno Mars. I know I you don't care what I Bruno. think about. Yeah, but I love Bruno. But I like him too. I think that he's great. I think his music is dope and he's bringing back bringing back like the 90s vibes. Yeah. That we grew up with. So I just love that. Yeah. and But I mean, like, you know, there's like a catch-22. Serena Sensei or Sensei, whatever her name is. I don't really know. She does have somewhat of a valid point. Right. Because, like, you know, some of the Grammys, if you look in some of the Grammys' past history, you know, like, where there's, you know, specifically categories. And I hate to put this, like, in categories. Mm -hmm. But, like, best R&B, best hip-hop, you know, right. all those things. You know, like... People have like Eminem or. But what gives that? What? But why is it an issue though? Why can't people of different races do different music? I, why? I don't know. I, I know, know it's a controversial subject, but why? Like, we should be able to express ourselves the way that we want to. If he wants to be hip hop, let him be hip hop. If he's the whitest white boy, it is what it is. Like Eminem. I mean, exactly. I think Eminem is great. Macklemore, too. He's a little rapper. Mac like, Macklemore won over his black counterparts or black colleagues in the in the genre as well. But, you know, so some people look at it like it's, like, a racial thing. And then other people look at it like the academies, maybe, that they have some bias. Just, you know, like, so. It's, I just wish it wasn't so, col like, everybody's so color-coded. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that. Everybody has a culture, Yes people do appropriate cultures yes but if we're gonna sit here and nitpick every single thing that happens in in society like it would it just sounds bad I you mean, have to be able to have the equal like i understand if we're gonna go into rights equal rights and stuff but like why can't they have the opportunity to be i get it they can't be crossing over to be pop i mean Flo Rida did Pitbull is Hispanic, and he was started out as hip hop, but and then see, now but he's more. But Flo Rida's music off top was 
more popish. Kind of. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like, more... I think it's like what you start off as, but the, the, it's transcending like right now, like but the music some, is transcending. I mean, even, even hip hop artists have like features <laughs> on with Taylor Swift right? and the girl groups. You know, like, some of the girl groups have a feature by a rapper, like, Gucci, Gucci Mane. And, like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I feel like if you happy and you doing it, then do it, whatever. If you win an award and people are mad, there's always going to be people going to be people who are mad, regardless. Right. And if I get, <laughs> if I if people try to, like, kill me because I'm saying this, I just think people should have the equal opportunity to do whatever the fuck. If you're talented enough. Right. And whatever, then do you. I mean, what's that guy's name? G Easy. He's a rapper, a white really rapper. You don't know who Jeezy is? Mm-mm. No. Logic. Logic is I think mixed though, but he looks more white. It's just I don't know. I mean, I get it when you're pro black and stuff, but like give others an opportunity to also I mean those award shows though and there's nothing wrong with being pro-black okay not Let's at all that sidebar before we get let me apologize top off my head okay <laughs> um no but what i'm saying is like she has she has an opinion and it is a lot like it's a legit op opinion to have but i also have on the like i see it i guess i see it because i'm more like i think more multicultural well let me say it and this i don't way. like to be like you know, i'm me... just puro mexicano like i can't i don't even let me just say it this way i was raised by my father so my father is obviously black and, mm -hmm. and i was raised more of in the black heritage black culture right and one thing i did notice is that you know there's a lot of um self-hate within the black community like mm -hmm. and so when we're in a time as of like right now yeah. where being pro-black is like the thing is it's not like the thing but like women are accepting their natural hair they're accepting their natural face they're accepting that they're beautiful like for black women i think that that has been something that has been missing for so long yeah Where like you know black men i'm not saying all okay this is not every black man but the views of women's body image has tainted the way that we view beauty. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunately, because of the That's ads society. and the, things, the yeah. things that we have seen, you know, it all is gearing beauty towards a white, skinny, blonde hair, blue eyes view, which is a completely opposite from the black woman. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that, you know, these girls grow up and they're like, am I not pretty enough? Am I not? And this happened to me. So yeah. I can say that. Because especially being mixed, it's so hard. Because black girls didn't like me, and Mexican girls didn't like me either. So it was like I liked her. She did. She was but my it was friend. like a clash, and so like I felt it yeah. a lot. And so when you have something that has been shunned for so long, mm -hmm. then you can finally be like, like I can ex I can say this for being mixed. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine what it is to be just fully black. Yeah. But whenever I've like really accepted the fact that I'm mixed and I'm beautiful and I love being both heritages and I love it, then when you see images of it, you just gear towards it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. Like and so for black women, I think that black women are beautiful. Like that's just there's like the skin like I wish I was dark skin. Like, <laughs> no, like, but you know what? No, I, I mean, I just, this is the thing. Me being Mexican, I have never seen it like, like any other. Like, I see if I see a beautiful black woman, she's beautiful. I think, you I see think not all women, not all people think that. But I'm like, for that's what I'm saying. Like for me, in my eyes, like I'm very like I appreciate everybody's cultures and everybody's beauty. Like I've never been one of those people that was. I think I was taught not to be jealous. Right. Like, of other people. My mom always told me, don't ever be jealous of anybody else because you don't know what they're going through. But imagine having kids growing up that had their parents telling them the same, the opposite. Yeah, and that's so hard, but I've always been, and that's, when I get told I'm racist or something, that's what hits me hard because I'm like, I love black people. Right. Like, yeah, like, it makes my eyes water because I'm like, I love everybody's cultures. I'm, I'm one of those people that likes to be like, so you're Indian or you're Asian or whatever. I want right. to know about you and like your life and how your life works because mine is different. different. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know what happens in other people's households, but I want to know, like, I'm so interested in that. And so I just, I hate to see that anybody being torn down because of what they look like or who they, 
or where they come from because you don't know and I wouldn't like I don't ever want to make someone feel less than what they are yeah but and then also like this is something that I I always when I think about what she said uh -huh. I think I try to put myself in her shoes I yeah. try to put myself in into a place where you know no the, the chair back has a gap and I was oh. like fell through <laughs> okay Sorry. I try to put myself in her shoes and I try to think like okay I'm fully a part of a culture yeah that I mean people say oh slavery is the past oh segregation is the past oh civil rights is the past guys the civil rights act was 1965 that was just literally yeah. 50 years ago no I think those Stop. things that are still relevant but um, I mean when I look at her I think about like being in, in a fully a part because I'm a part of both yeah like I still have my Latino men that are getting paid two dollars and 75 cents an hour to do migrant working in in the fields yeah and then you know you have your black side that's actually not being able to go through the red tape of you know the economic and political and social barriers so yeah. I see that I see what's being taken and I feel like it bothers me and I can only imagine how she feels if she's being told that repeatedly and she's she, still young yeah and also too. we don't know where she comes from exactly um how she was raised or anything so it's like you don't know the oppression that she's felt exactly so I don't know that I don't right. know the struggles that she's faced to give her the perception right that this cultural appropriation thing is you know like it is it's a true thing it's a real thing I get it Mm -hmm. But I don't know her her side of her story yeah, to be able to be like now she wrong because no she has her valid points I think we also have valid points right okay you know you're going to uh, you you're going to be able to like to like feel what she's saying more than I can right because I'm Mexican and that's it but I mean a lot of people won't you know relate to me because of certain things that I've gone through and one thing that I will say like you know like my honey sent me a video and it was a video about this black individual who you know is very very pro-black and he that's all he searched that's all he did and then you know the the way that the algorithms are on the internet what you look it feeds you more of that stuff right so what he tried to do was he tried to he was um, a leftist right he tried to go alt right mm -hmm. which means far right like I hate black people I hate all this stuff. Yeah. you know what I'm saying like yeah. and so he tricked the algorithms to produce him information I haven't even looked at the camera <laughs> to produce sorry guys I've been looking at Erica um to produce him information yeah. that was so alt-right that it started feeding him stuff about the KKK it started feeding him stuff about <sighs> white supremacy and he would leave comments and people would be liking it liking his comments about being racist and all this stuff so it's like this I mean, I remember when I first got pregnant and I would search babies on Instagram. Now, all you see on my searcher page is babies. <laughs> like, that's yeah. it. Because that's what I searched. That's what the internet was feeding me. Yeah. So if you search the same stuff, that's all you whether know. if it's pro-black, alt-right, super Latino, you know, right. Democrat, whatever, you're going to get the same information. Yeah. And that can alter your perspective. It can 100%. because if you constantly, yeah, I mean, we talked about it before. I was like, girl, you real, you real woke right now. And she's like, well, my honey is all, you know, always sends me videos and people always send her stuff. And because she's very um, open about her beliefs and you always talk right. about stuff on Instagram and uh, or Facebook or whatever. So she always gets a lot of feedback. So if you're con like you said, you're constantly watching and listening to right. certain things. And my boyfriend does the same thing. He'll be sending me stuff and I'm like, okay, stop sending this stuff. Cause I'm like, I'm going crazy. Cause I'm over here pro black too. Like, <laughs> how do the people, like I'm just in no the offense guys calm down. Um, but like, I'm just, but I'm to me, I feel like I'm just very multicultural right. and I relate to a lot of things and I, I have a heart. So right. I'm always like, you know, especially when it comes to like, um, you know, black kids getting killed by cops and stuff like that. Girl, I would get videos all the or time. Or like guys getting now uh, pulled over because they're, they look Mexican. Well, I mean, it's not even, it's just like cultural things. I mean, it has, I just, I have hope that I, that there's still people, good people out there, you know, like yeah. I still have that you know what there's still good people and i hope that there's there still is. good people and I'm, go ahead i'm sorry 
Oh no, it's fine. I always do it. My bad. But I just feel like I just I don't want it. To and we don't be... say all this to be like you know, want you to take it, you know, and think that we're a certain way because we're not. No, because somebody I'm so open. Yeah, because somebody in New York. In New York. DJ Envy took something that somebody said, like, very <laughs> literally. Did you listen to what he said? I watched the whole episode, girl. Did you think what he said? Okay, no. well, just explain to what, what okay, happened. Okay, so Jesus and Mero are, um, who actually started out with just a podcast called The Bodega Boys. And they now right. have a show on Vice, and it's called Jesus and Mero. Boop. Where they do a lot of commentary on things that happen throughout the week on TV. Right. So DJ Envy actually um, went on the reel, and because it came out that he had cheated before with Erica Mena. Oh, I didn't know who it was. Yeah, I think it's Erica Mena. Okay, so he cheated or whatever. <laughs> and so on the reel, they're I'm discussing. Gonna fact check that. <laughs> He's just gonna go fact check. <laughs> so on the reel, they're discussing what happened, and his wife is saying, you know, like saying how he was a different person and all this stuff. Right. So, so Jesus and Mero do, like, commentary. And so, basically, Jesus was like, he's like, well, she don't uh, she don't complain about that DJ Envy money or so, to that effect, something right. to that effect. And I honestly was just laughing. Like, it was a joking matter. And they always go on The Breakfast Club and they, and they get interviewed by them and they just kind of give them good, like, promo and stuff for their right. show or any tours that they're doing. And when I saw the clip that DJ Envy was talking about, I was like, oh, they were just playing around. Like, he was just like, ha, ha, ha. I mean, DJ sure. Envy, you make a lot of money. Your wife is obviously not with you for the money, but obviously she's benefiting from it. I mean, it's a joke. It was a joke because... I thought it was a joke. I didn't I... say any disrespect, but... But then, so DJ Envy gets... Pissed. Like, he's pissed. Like, he starts the interview pissed. He's like... He introduced him as... Uh, Pussy and dickhead? Uh, yeah, pussy and dickhead. <laughs> okay. And normally like, he oh. says, we have a special guest, but he's like, we have a guest, pussy and dickhead. <laughs> and like, like nothing special oh, about like, it. Geez. Like, okay. So he tells, he confronts them. He gets pissed. Like, he's real mad. He's like, you don't know what you said? And Jesus is like, play the clip. And I go like, play the clip. Right. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, the real New York. They're from the Bronx or whatever. But so he, you know, just keeps going. And he's like, just play the clip. I don't know what you're talking about. They right. film every day of the week except like Fridays. So by the time Damn, that they get on our grind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they do it every day. All the time. Jeez. So. So anyway, <laughs> we like paused. Um, so he's like, a, like getting pissed off and pissed off. And we're like, OK. So finally they play it, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, oh, my bad, my nigga. Like, I didn't know. You were gonna get that hype about that like right. we honestly didn't mean it maliciously like we were just joking we always joke around he's like nah you don't joke around about my family you yeah. talked about my wife it would be different if they were like nah his wife is if they literally said Gia or you know her right. name is Gia and then or like oh she ain't shit like something to the effect of disrespect but them saying oh she's just benefited from that DJ Envy money I honestly don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah, like, I think he took true? it like that's the reason why she was with him was because of the money. And, and you, we've been together since we were 15. She was making everybody, more money. Everybody knows that. We so, do. We know that. We've so why... Seen. I don't know. I just think that that happened and okay, so cool. Bam. He confronts them. Then they apologize. They apologize on air. Yeah. Like, oh, we're sorry. That's off topic. Yeah. You know? So, but... After he apologizes, he was still pissed off. He got up and left out the interview. Yeah, he just walked out. He just walked out. out. And we're like... So if you're like... It, at what point is an apology acceptable for that comment? I, I think he was just pissed off. I think he was just mad to be mad because... I'm sorry. I don't think it was that big of a deal. I think that you know what it is. I think that psychologically, like, that can, that can mentally affect, like, you. Knowing that you cheated on your wife. And you cheated, yeah. and your wife took you back, and now you're being laughed about about that. It could hurt. I mean, but of course, you're the one yeah. who did that. You're the one who cheated. So, so living like, the truth. Exactly. So you have to be like, I mean, and you're a public figure. You're in the media. You're always on air and have videos and right. cameras. Excuse me, in front of you. So I I'm sorry. Know. How you gonna be mad if you went on a TV show to talk about your cheating scandal 
and be mad if somebody has a comment. So because someone who you know makes a comment, yeah, that's an issue. Come on. I don't know. I think that there's just been a lot of beef also about people saying things on air that has caused another issue. Another one is one that you told me about, which is yes. what? Yes. Okay, so Tori Lanes was at, also on The Breakfast Club. <laughs> the Breakfast just, Club got a lot of drama. Uh, how ironic. <laughs> um, he was on The Breakfast Club promoting his new album, and uh, Charlemagne was like, you know, you always say that you, we, we used to say that you sounded like Drake, or you sound like other people, so... I mean, what is it now? And he's like, nah. He's like, I think I have my own sound, but because I write for so many people and I've, you know, done demos for people, that they start to sound like me. Mm. And he was like, nah, a lot of these people are out here sounding like me. For example, boom, he says Travis Scott sounded like him in a song because he didn't know that, I don't know if it was a Kanye West song, it was somebody's song. Uh -huh. But Travis Scott was on there singing or doing something on the song, and he was like, now nah, that was my voice at first. Oh. So Travis Scott just follows on to the same kind of way that Tory Lanez was. I don't know. I don't care. But <laughs> later on in the week, or like a week later, I see a video on Baller Alert, mm -hmm. I think. And they were, it was like a... It was it was the worst video, right? Um, but it's basically Tory Lanez and Travis Scott, and Travis Scott is actually coming up to him and like trying to address like, right. why are you talking about me type of thing. Yeah. I don't know. People got beef for the, the the dumbest reasons these days, but they got beef. Whatever they were like trying to talk it out, but right. there were so many people in the trailer. So the guy who was trying to video was like all like moving around and you don't want trying to get like, the check from the TMZ. Right, who's trying to sell the damn story. So anyway, you can hear <laughs> Tori Lane's like, if we gonna talk, we gonna talk. You know, getting loud. And Travis was like, I'm right here. Like, this is why I'm here. We need to clear this up. Right. And then eventually you hear Tori Lane saying like, all right, everybody get out of here. We, if this is what you want to do. You want to squash? Like, basically fight. We gonna do this one-on-one. -on -one. We gonna do this. Really? You're fighting. I think Travis Scott's at a different point in his life right now. He's a Mo City native, right? Like, Mo yeah. City. And I think that right now, he's probably, like, worried about how he can make the most money for his daughter. daughter. Like, right. I don't really think that he's really focused about fighting. Travis Scott, Let you me. do you, boo, and stop worrying about that little Tory Lanez boy. I don't really know who he is. <laughs> you don't? So, no. I mean, oh. I, I may know some of his music, but I know Travis Scott. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. The difference is, it's like, I know Travis Scott's face. Yeah, I know. don't know Tory Lane's face. Okay, so I am your consumer, right? Yeah. So if I am your consumer and I don't know who he is, and we do this podcast and we research all this stuff, then I haven't seen Tory Lane's <laughs> in the media since when? Yeah. So I've seen Travis Scott though. Yeah. I see Travis Scott's music. I listen yeah. to his music. Go Travis Scott. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> She's like, go. I mean, don't don't worry about go. them, Travis Scott. Don't worry. Yeah. I mean, Anyways, I think this is crazy. I'm just over this beef, man. I'm like, there's too much drama. Yeah. We don't we don't have drama. No, not necessarily. Mm. I think we're going to um we're going to skip over all of that. Yeah, because we're we're talking so much, we kind of running out of time. It's cuz we talk a lot. Well, we'll talk about the baseball player. Oh. <sighs> Wait, mm -hmm. yeah. Or do you want to that. talk about the BJ? No. No. We posted it on our Instagram. If you haven't seen our Instagram, posted yeah. a video about a BJ robot. <laughs> if y'all have commentary about that, you can definitely uh, write it on our Instagram. Yeah, you can write it on there. It's at Mixing Mexican. I'm K. You can follow me at the underscore K Renee. That's R E N E E. And I'm forever underscore Keeks. And she always puts it at the bottom of our videos, so I'm not gonna spell it anymore. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's it. So just but watch what us if on YouTube. Listening to us. Uh, well, okay, so it's forever <laughs> underscore K E A K S. Ding uh, it, Just keep it consistent. We gotta do the same thing all the time. Amor. Anyways, I, I, I love to eye roll, and you know what I've noticed? I make a lot of faces. Your eyes are gonna get stuck like that. Probably because my eyes hurt right now. <laughs> God damn. It's like so, halfway stuck. <laughs> so we this is gonna kind of segue into our relationship topic of domestic yeah. abuse. 
um, domestic violence just in general, which is a very serious topic. So I'm going to try to get my serious voice on. Mm -hmm. No, I'm serious because this is bullshit. Like, it's disgusting to me. It's so, like, just emasculating to see a man do this. Like, I can't stand it. It's disgusting. I, I can't even. I'm, I'm repulsed. Like, literally repulsed by this video. It, um, it makes my skin crawl. Like, it, And I honestly, it pisses me the fuck off when I see this shit. It really does. And I want to know, like, it makes me want to know what the fuck is going on inside this relationship. Like, I want to... Like, it fuck? makes me want to whoop your ass. Like, that's what it makes me want to do. Like, yeah. anyway, what we're talking about is a baseball player. His name is Danry Vasquez. He's uh, was part of the Lancaster Bar Brainstorms, an independent Atlantic league. He was also played for the Corpus Christi Hooks. Basically, yeah. in August in 2016, or it was 2015, he received charges for beating up a former girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So this was like two years ago. The video actually leaked about last week, mid last week, this past week, this yeah. past week, and it just went completely viral. Yes, like, it was on every social media outlet, every news outlet, TMZ, CNN, Bala Alert, ABC, KPRC. I mean, it was everywhere. Yeah, and Univision, it, Univision. Yes, because of course this is a Latino. He's, um, I think he's Venezuelan. Right? I have no idea. I didn't read into his background because I didn't care no more. Yeah, well, I did because <laughs> I wanted to know what the hell he was doing. Yeah. But, um... Oh, yeah, he's from Venezuela. Yeah, so you see the images of her coming into the into the stairwell. He hits her. If you want to watch the video, it's on our Instagram. Yeah, just watch it. Uh, I don't even want to recount it. Just disgusting. Like... <sighs> it's just sad because... <sighs> you know what? Let me go into back to into culture. <clears throat> and unfortunately, this is going to be about a Hispanic culture. Machismo. There's machista, man, which is, means that they are they're very controlling. In the Hispanic culture, especially in the older the older head, the older like older people, they the men believe that they were supposed to control the women, and the women are very um, submissive in the like the Hispanic culture, and it is very true because i've seen it i've lived it i know which is why you see a lot of moms when they raise their sons they don't discipline their sons they do yeah it just depends on my house there was discipline well yeah but, but um, we're talking about that environment um so basically i think it's, it's it is definitely a cultural thing but it happens with other men and, and stuff. So I can't just say it's fully on a Hispanic thing. But he is Hispanic. This is something that happens and gets kind of like... They just kind of cover it up. Nobody really talks about it unless it is Brought put up in... like this. Yes. Yeah. Because it's not okay. It's never okay to hit somebody regardless if you're the woman hitting the man or the man hitting the woman. Yeah. And I've had friends who have gone through domestic violence relationships. And we don't know. If we have never been in it, we don't know the men like what really goes on in your head as a woman. Right. Because for me, I'm always like, oh, I will never allow it. But you don't know. You don't. I don't. You I really, really don't. don't. And I don't. I can't say that I've ever had a situation like that. I had a guy try to put his hands on me once, mm -hmm. and that was it. That was the last time I spoke to that person, and that was it. They tried to choke me. Yeah, somebody tried to do that to me too. I got a scar across his face. But see, this is the thing, like. <laughs> If you if that happens and you don't stop it at that point, yeah, you you have to leave. Yeah, it's just it and it's so hard because especially for, you know, we were single at the time mm -hmm. when that happened to both of us. Like we were young, mm -hmm. like you know. But imagine if you have kids, or you're you know you're married yeah. to this person and this person threatens your life all the time and you're you're in it and they threaten your kids because I've heard stories. Because I watched Dr. Phil. Yeah. And there was a one episode just recently where this lady, she killed her husband because he threatened that he she would kill, he would kill their kids. Yeah. And you don't know if he's joking or not. Yeah. That's not a joke. If he's telling the truth or not. Yeah. Because he's beating your ass. Like, and so at what point the, the, the reality gets distorted for women like that and they feel trapped and they recluse and they don't speak to family and they that's what i'm saying and then 
And also, they try to manipulate you to the point that you think that something's wrong with you. Right. And not them. And so, it's like, it slowly starts. And I feel like, <sighs> there's signs. There's definitely signs Very to see when so. someone's going to end up being in that that um, type of relationship. Because the guy tries to make you Control see that you. everything that you do is something was wrong with it. And you're just like... At first, you're like, oh, okay, well, maybe I need to change because he's going to change me for the better. You know, like, people right. always have that, oh, you know, sometimes people make you feel like you, to become a better person. There's certain ways of those things happening. Right. So if you start seeing where they're, like, getting mad at you all the time about something stupid and trivial, right. you're like, I don't, you know, you need to have a red flag. It's so hard to see it when you're in a relationship with somebody right? because you're not thinking that way. But then eventually it's like, I'm going to grab you and, like, really manhandle. Then you're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, exactly. And see, but by that time, they are slowly have been breaking you down and slowly making you feel like the recluse. Like, um, you're a little more distanced from your family, so you don't feel comfortable calling them and be like, look, this is what happened. Right. Um, I thankfully have never been like that because I'm so, like, high well, strung yeah. and like, yeah. what the fuck are you? What are you? Yeah, uh -uh. but every person's different and so it's like you but know, you know honestly and i've said this before this is my one of my worst fears yeah. and i thank god that i have i have a weird boyfriend but he's not mean <laughs> like i'm he's not I, weird Stop. he's different he he's just a very introvert and yeah. she's an extrovert that's so she thinks is. that's fucking weird she's just <laughs> loud as hell and she thinks that her husband he, being quiet or her boyfriend being quiet is just fucking weird and he's just like he's not he just doesn't he just balance she's not all the time it's true <laughs> that's it but anyway so he's not he's not an angry person like he'd rather walk away yeah then argue with me and i'm like argue with me no and sometimes i'm mean, mexican and i'm just mad no mexican rage <laughs> i mean but it's like we're saying no. this because we saw this video this is not okay um and you know we try to talk about topics that affect maybe sometimes People, affect our yeah. listeners like if you're listening right now and you feel like um you know this is something that you're going through like if you're going through it right now and you know, you don't know what to do when you don't know yeah. where to go and you don't know who to talk to. Like, we're here to talk to you. Like, I feel like we're not only here for entertainment purposes, but I feel like both of us have a philanthropic, like, bone in our body that we oh, want yeah. to be able to help people. I'm willing to help anyone. Yeah. And so, like, whether it's finding you resources of mm -hmm. where to go, whether it's, shit, giving you a hotel for the night, whether it's figuring out something, like, I think that... Yeah. I can speak for both of us and say that you don't deserve that. And if it's a woman, you're beautiful. If it's a man, you're handsome. You know, just feel like you're you because know, it you're happens, it. and it, yeah. it also can happen with straight people, gay people. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, those things are not healthy. Abuse has no gender. It doesn't, and it's so sad. You know, it's sad to see that people go through things like this and. And they, they feel like they just don't know what to do. They don't know who to go to because they're going to feel judged if they go tell their mom or right. their best friend or whatever. Because we don't, that's the thing, like, we don't know what's going on. But for me, like, I feel like I keep it 100%. If I'm going through something, I always have to talk to someone. Right. And I'm just like, I'm just venting. Just let me vent or right. whatever. Um, but I don't know. Like, I think it's also not everybody's super strong. It emotionally and I think my mom was always very and my mom went through a lot of stuff mm -hmm. which she's gonna be featured one of these days yeah um but she always taught me like you need to be strong and she would like tell it to me only because I was a girl the only girl mm -hmm. and she was always just real adamant of me always knowing that I had to be stronger than the boys because I was a girl right and she always used to talk to me about it and I think that's why I'm so strong and always level headed about certain things and kind of just yeah. you gotta keep your eyes open regardless if you're in love and oh my god love is blind you gonna be that blind and you're gonna get hit right beside the head you know like I saw my parents go through some stuff and my yeah. dad tried it he tried it my mom is not one to <laughs> play with because my mom one right. time my dad did something and my mom grabbed a pen and almost 
like mama pushed him off the chair but she didn't she was gonna hit him with the pan but she thought twice yeah yeah it had been right in front of me and the crazy thing is i didn't think there was domestic violence at the time yeah because my dad was very he was verbally abusive right for sure and my mom he broke my mom down a lot but my mom had to sit there and like because she was also a sociology major Mm -hmm. she kind of like had to kind of rehabilitate herself in a sense like her going through all these things that she was doing and internships that she was doing for like drug abuse and stuff right that she was counseling people who use drugs and stuff so it was crazy because she was so strong during those times my dad cheated my dad did crazy stuff and like he was just verbally abusive and like the way that we talk now like we're reckless sometimes like he used to be like chingas a tu madre and like if you speak spanish and you know you're mexican you're gonna know what i'm saying but it's like you know like motherfucker like all types of just mean things and to this day it's crazy because now that i'm by myself and now that my mom's in a different you know in another marriage my mom doesn't talk like that right the way that our life used to be when we were in the household with my dad growing up it is not the way my house like my house is so quiet i get nervous when a baby cries like Mm -hmm. with like i do why you look at me (laughs) because your baby's always crying (laughs) i mean no but with, with you know how i grew up like i said my dad raised me because my dad actually you know got custody of us because yeah. of domestic abuse within our household not mm-hmm. the hands of my father but you know this being chip and the whole that whatever <laughs> anyways but it's just kind of like you know you don't really know so when we're talking about this and we're saying hey like you know you can reach out to us you can do this because we kind of experience this firsthand like yeah. whether we've been a victim of it or we've actually had it growing up and it's just not fucking okay because like for us like when you see that or for you when you experience it there's a lot of reprogramming rehabilitation therapy all these things that you have to go through to kind of like be like okay let me let me reprogram myself yeah and like at first like you know you become like an angry person and then you're just like ah fuck everybody fuck you fuck whatever i think i had a big attitude because of that too yeah i mean it's only it's only like logical that you do because Mm -hmm. it's like you are being programmed to do be this way and Mm -hmm. it's like no, nah, like yeah. you, you can't. I used to talk so reckless. Like I understand that I'm very so, open. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, that I was so like I was. I'm very open and I talk a lot and I say dumb shit sometimes. But I used to be disrespectful. Like I was just being off the wall disrespectful. Right. And my mom, she ended up telling me like you are horrible. Like you, your mouth is horrible, right. and I know I can be sometimes, but I'm. Not, I watch what I say more now than before because yeah. I'm also 28 years old. I should uh, watch what I say, but before I, I did not care. I did not yeah. care, and it. My mom stopped talking to me for like a whole week, and I was like, "Why isn't my mom?" Call-? My, and if y'all know, my mom calls me all the freaking time. Right. So if I didn't hear from my mom, and she was like, "I don't want to talk to you." You're being an asshole. Like, she told me to my face, I'm not going to talk to you if you're going to act like this. Right. And I had to look myself in the mirror and be like, what the fuck am I doing? Right. And I got it together. And I think I was like 21, 22. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's crazy because, you know, we see that, like, we see this guy that's an idiot that pushes this girl down the stairs. And then you look at the exact opposite, like the punishment in Ecuador for hitting your spouse is the spouse gets to whoop your ass so (gasps) there is like a video that was surfacing where the police ecuador police are allowing this wife who called the police on her husband because he hit her to give him 20 20 whoopings oh my god on his butt (laughs) so i I mean that's like hammurabi's code an eye for an eye you know if you steal they chop off your arm like kind of like that type of like punishment Mm -hmm. so i don't know if i'd be down for lashings yeah. But hey, it may prevent some people from doing it. I mean, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, if I, I could spank you, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, wrong. I know. Wrong I'm just playing. Uh, wrong, wrong thing. <laughs> um, no, I, I honestly think what they need to do is keep that man away from her. 
and she needs to be like go to there should be a counseling available for people who go through this thing because some people don't have insurance and i'm gonna go through the whole thing like if you don't have insurance and you, you that's what i'm saying so like you, who do you talk to there are hotlines yeah and there's things like that but after that hotline and after that advice that they give you where do you go what do you do Mm-hmm. How do I keep this pers- this toxic person out of my life? Yeah. Because if you're still mentally down, they're going to find their way to manipulate you to come back. Right. And this is how the cycle keeps going. This is how until this person, one of these people ends up dead, it's going to keep going. There should be like a website, like somebody needs to create this, like a web, a therapy chat room, like where you can get one-on-one with a therapist and have anonymity and like just talk about stuff like and i think there's support groups for sure and there's groups because i have a friend bruni a shout out to my girl broom broom she has a domestic violence uh blog because she was she's an advocate because she went through something and i know she doesn't care if i say her name because this is the way her blog is she's very about women empowerment she's very feminist because of the things that have happened in her life right and i think that people become a feminist because of the things that go they go through right and um she has a blog and it's i mean she's she says that she has view like people who even look at her blog from like brazil europe different things like that and so she She's very about domestic violence. I think October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month as well. Okay. And it's the perp color purple. Okay. Um, so she wears nothing but purple. Like her nails are always done in a purple shade. Yeah. It's really cute because she believes in it and she believes that this is something that she wants to have her own shelter, a women's shelter. Yeah, which go, Bruni. I think you need to do that ASAP. Let's, and I wish she could come poppy. on our show. Yeah. But she's in Florida. So shout out to Orlando or whatever. Yeah. Um, but there is an, an, a DV national line, so domestic violence national line, and that is 1-800-799-SAFE, that's 7233, so it's going to be at the bottom of our screen when we do say this, so right. you, if you ever need it, it's there, if you're in Houston, it's 713-528-2121, right. and we also have, just in case something ever happens to you and there's, you've either been raped or it's got you've gone through something like this there's a rape crisis line in houston mm-hmm. it's 713-528-7273 and i'm gonna say this i feel like you know people don't think that because you're married you can't get raped like just because you're married to your spouse yeah if you, you don't want to have sex you don't have to have sex right if you if blank. your husband or wife forcefully puts themselves onto you and you don't want to that's a form of rape and that's not okay no and so just because you you're married doesn't mean that that gives you or in a relationship i i don't no it doesn't at all no so i think that people need to be mindful of that so our relationship topic was if domestic violence was present in your relationship would you stay and i think that we both clearly agree that that's not something that's okay no ever like ever it's um, not. I just feel like I don't care how much I love you. If you put your hands on me, we done and through. You know, but it's hard too because you know, like some people will stay, and I I just pray that if this has happened to you and you do decide to stay, my prayer is that it never happens again in your relationship. I don't really know the clear outlines. Like I said, we don't really know what goes on in people's relationships to make them stay. But like, if this is something that's a repetitive nature in your relationship, then I really hope that you get out because um, everybody knows that the risk of you being killed at the hands of your abuser goes up when you leave them. So when you do decide to leave them, you need to form a plan. And that's why we gave you those, you know, domestic those. violence hotlines and the Houston resources. And then if you are listening to this and you want more resources, we definitely can kind of link you up with Bruni. Maybe yeah. we can kind of give you Bruni's information and she can kind of give you more because she's the expert on this. As she a, you know? literally spends most of her time with DV Awareness. Um, What's her website? Do you know? 
Mm. She's gonna be mad because I don't know it. Like, <laughs> well, Bruni, we're gonna give you a shout out. We'll leave her um, Information. website mm -hmm. below on our YouTube if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, if you're listening to us on iTunes or SoundCloud, head over to our YouTube channel, Mixed in Mexican Podcast, and we'll go ahead and leave that in the description um, below. Yeah. But I mean, ultimately, I think that everybody is beautiful. I think that you have to make sure that you're living your best life out here, baby. You got to live your best life because nobody's going to live your life for you. I challenge everybody to repeat a mantra every morning that says, I am great, I am beautiful, I am worth it. And then, trust me, I think that that's going to change your perspective on how you view yourself because you are beautiful. Yes, you, you are, are worth it. Yes, I am. And you are great. I'm always great. So, I mean, we just ran through a couple of topics. Um, R.I.P. to Stephen Hawking. He passed away. One of the greatest oh, minds. Oh, I got her website. Oh, okay. Here we go. Her website is www.womeninpowertoday.com. Womeninpowertoday.com. I knew it was something. I was like, I know it's something power, women, something. <laughs> Sorry, broom broom. Yeah, so. we got a girl. Oh, look at our Rue here. He's our Hi, homeboy Rue. Rue. <laughs> he just stops by to try to bug us. No, he's podcast. he's trying to tell us it's time to go. No, not really. Yes, it is. Oh no, not really. It's time to go. All right. <laughs> thank well, you. Thank you for listening to the Mixed and Mexican podcast conversations with Kay. And I'm Keeks. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Mixed and Mexican podcast, Conversations with Kay. And I'm Keeks. So if you liked what you heard today or previously, please like and subscribe and also share. If you have something that you want to say or tell us, leave it in the comments below. Yay. Thank you. Thank for you. Bye. Bye.